Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily, and today I'm going to show you how to easily remove or replace objects in your footage using Adobe After Effects. Now it's time to get started with the tutorial. So we're in After Effects here, and what I want to do is identify the portion of the clip in which we want to remove our subject. I like how he is jumping right off the diving board here, right around like the 3 second and 20 frame mark, and I want to bring him back in right before he gets back in the water, so let's hit the 5 second and 20 frame mark. So what I'm going to do is duplicate my footage, go to the 320 mark, split our clip, go up to the 520 portion, and trim that down as well. So the next thing I want to do is remove our subject from the video itself, which is the fun part of the tutorial. It's probably why you're watching. So there are two ways we can go about this. The first way is we can rotoscope our subject, and I would do that in the instance where we have a lot of detail in the background, perhaps like a crowd or something like that. But in this case, we have some mountains, a sailboat, a little bit of water, not too much. So we're going to go with the masking method, which is my preferred method. So I'm going to switch my quality to full here, and I'm going to draw a rough mask around our subject here. So the most important part about this is that we want to switch this to none so we can see everything around them, but we want to make sure that we select our keyframe here for mask path. Trust me, I've done these animations before and I forgot to select mask path, and at that point, nothing else is recorded. So make sure you set that keyframe. Next thing I'm gonna do is gonna go frame by frame for these two seconds here, and I'm going to be adjusting our mask path. Now this is gonna take a while, so we'll fast forward here, but you'll see how I do it. All right, so our subject is now completely masked out. So the next thing we're gonna do is change our mask from none to subtract, so it's transparent behind them. Then we're gonna go over to our content aware fill window. If you don't see this window, you can go to window, content aware fill, and then it'll pop up. So with our alpha expansion, what this does is basically expands the edges of our mask. The reason we wanna do this is because if our mask is really precise, let's say on something like a rotoscope, or something as tight as this, uh, Potentially you could see the edges of our subject show up and it'll look kind of weird So I like to have the alpha expansion anywhere between 10 to 15 We're gonna leave it at 12 for now fill method We're gonna leave to object and range. We're gonna leave that to work area So next thing I'm gonna do is select generate fill layer and we're gonna let after effects do its thing So now we can see that our subject is completely gone After effects created this fill layer right here when we use content aware fill and that's what's actually covering up the entire mask that we uh, we'd created so this is what it's creating per frame which looks really cool so when we put it all together this is what we have so cool so the next thing we're going to do is add our smoke burst and the way i want to do it is composite it into the scene and the best way to do that is using the 3d camera tracker so i'm going to go to our original shot here i'm going to add the 3d camera tracker effect and we will let after effects do its thing our 3D camera tracker is completed, and now we have all of these fun little points on the screen. I'm gonna just increase the size of these so we can see them a little bit better. So right here, I'm going to zoom in and see, okay, well, I wanna have my smoke burst be right where the diving board comes off at, but we don't see any points here. So I'm gonna do the next best thing. I'm gonna find the closest point that's consistent. And I say consistent because sometimes they jump around. And right here, I'm looking towards this deck, and I see this purple point right here, and it's looking pretty good. So we're gonna use that. So I'm gonna go right click this and then create null and camera. And what that's gonna do right away is it's going to create a 3D camera and a null that's going to be stuck to that point this entire time. So now you see how that's looking on screen. Now what we're gonna do is pull up our actual smoke blast impact. So I'm gonna bring this down here. I'm going to make it 3D and I'm going to change the position. So I'm gonna take the position from our tracking null copy that and then go to our smoke blast and paste it there so now it's stuck in there just like that but it's not at the end of the diving board so we're going to fix that what we're going to do is drag it up and we are going to slide this across now the reason i'm able to get away with this is because like i said before the tracking point is consistent it's staying put the entire time so if i move around our footage a little bit I am assuming that that's also going to stay put the entire time since it's using accurate tracking information. Now what I'm gonna do is stylize this a little bit because I don't like the way this looks. So what I'm gonna do first and foremost is I'm going to add a tint effect. So what I'm gonna do is copy and paste some hex codes into here so you can see what I'm working with. And then we're gonna paste in this hex code as well. 
All right, this is looking better, but we have these harsh edges around it and that just does not look good. So we're gonna fix this as well. I'm going to take our masking tool and I'm going to create a circular mask right around the start of the smoke blast. And then I'm going to feather this like by like, let's say 400 by a ton. That way there are no harsh edges here. Next thing I'm gonna do is add a deep glow. So now we want our smoke to animate in at the time our guy disappears. Well, we know that it starts right here at this point at the 320 mark. So I'm gonna slide down our smoke blast here and just see how this looks. All right. So I like the way this is looking, but I don't like how it starts off from almost nothing. So I'm gonna just trim up the smoke burst a little bit and I'm going to scale it and I'm gonna move it a little bit higher. I love the way this looks. And if we wanna take it a step further, we could actually use the same generative fill process to take out this reflection here. I'm gonna leave it in just for the sake of the tutorial, but that's another thing to keep a lookout for if you're using a shot with reflections. So this is how you do a fun disappearing effect using Adobe After Effects. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Thanks for watching and stay creative.